Hi everyone, it's Dawn, and I was asked by a subscriber to give my thoughts on the Carnival Magic. Carnival Magic is not the newest and the biggest ship in the fleet anymore. It's part of the dream class, and I'll give you my thoughts on whether it holds up today, right after this. Carnival Magic is the second in the Dream class that came out, of course, the Carnival Dream, but she looks a little different than her sister ship if you look at the profile because the Carnival Magic has larger lifeboats. So they basically have half the size of the lifeboats that are on the other, uh, on the Carnival Dream. The Carnival Dream has a lot more, but smaller boats. They both hold the same amount of total people but it just gives it a different profile, a different outline. Also, the Carnival Magic was the first one ever to come out with a ropes course at sea. So she holds that distinction. And when she came out, what the Magic didn't have, she had the new upgraded restaurant for the Italian restaurant, uh, specialty dining. She also had the Red Frog Pub. And of course, that's the year they launched the Thirsty Frog Red Ale, their signature ale for the Red Frog Pub. So there are quite a few distinctions on that ship that weren't on the Magic when she launched. Another big thing on board is that their cabins, they have the what's called the Quince category, which actually sleeps five people, which as you know, if you're trying to get five people in the cabin on a lot of cruise lines, some cruise lines just don't have it. Four is the max you can get. So having Quint's cabin was a really good innovation for this class of ship. The ship itself holds about 3,700 passengers and is slightly smaller than you would expect for a ship that holds that many crew passengers and crew. So that can lead to some things which I'll talk about a little bit later. So let's talk about some of the positives. I already mentioned the restaurant. Of course, they have the Mongolian Walk on board, which is one of my favorite restaurants on Carnival. They have, okay, I'm gonna pronounce it right this time, Guy's Burger Joint. I always say geese, and people give me a hard time about it, but I'm in Canada, and when you see ghee, uh, spelled that way, that's how you say it. In fact, my brother-in-law's name is ghee, spelled G-U-Y, so that's just a natural thing, but it's Guy's Burger Joint, and I, yes, I, I do know who he is. As I mentioned, they have a big sports court with the ropes course, which was the first at sea. They have a fair size pool area. They have lots of entertainment from the Punchline Comedy Club to the Broadway shows in the theater. They have dance lessons that they have out. And one of the most popular things on board is the Hasbro Game Show, where they do like Liars Club, a game, uh, a version of Yahtzee, Jenga, Sorry, all these kinds of games. And uh, yeah, those are probably the most popular things on those ships. They have the mini putt, so there's lots of things to keep a wide variety of ages and cruisers occupied. As far as the main dining lounge or the Lido buffet is concerned, they're adequate. If you're not too fussy with your food, they serve really good regular food, just something like something you'd get at a chip stand or uh, you know a regular restaurant without going to the upgraded dining. If you have a little bit more of a fussy palate, I would recommend going to the specialty dining restaurants because the other ones are made for mass market and made quickly. There are not a lot of spices and things like that. It's really a little bit more bland down food. Not saying that it's bad. It just doesn't have huge bold flavors that you might find in some of the specialty restaurants. The Carnival Magic has a lot going for it. It's a good sized ship. It's clean. It was built in 2009, so it's still a relatively new ship. It hasn't been out for 10 years yet. Uh, they're always uh, refreshing and upgrading it, but it does have some flaws and some of those I'll mention now. One of them is you tend to get a lot of long lines especially on busy itineraries. It's a popular ship with families and things like that. So if you're in the summer and you're going to a shore excursion, getting off the ship can yeah, be a bit of a tussle sometimes and just seems crowded that you would normally think about when you're heading to shore on some other cruise lines. Uh, but it's just what you're gonna have to do with a smaller ship with a lot of people on it. It just 
it gets a little crowded. Another thing is, of course, on sea days, they basically, because they, you have the big sports court up top with a huge ropes course, you're going to run at a deck space on top, which they kind of do. So it makes it much harder to get a good lounge chair by the pool. And sometimes it can just seem really, really overwhelming. If you're claustrophobic and don't like being around a lot of people, that will be an issue for you as it, the top decks can get very, very crowded. Now, an option for that is to head down to deck five. Deck five, which runs along the outside of the ship, often has basically empty lounge chairs all the time and they have four hot tubs down there as well so it's a good place to go they're very underutilized compared to the amount of people that are on the ship so if you feel claustrophobic and you feel overwhelmed on the upper decks head on down to deck five and you might just be almost by yourself and i'm gonna have to tell you now get there early for food for entertainment the Punchline Comedy Club tickets can be gone well in advance of the show. So if you're thinking on a last minute heading to the Comedy Club, chances are you're not getting in. Mongolian Walk, Guy's Burger Joint, they can have 30, 35 minute waits. Uh, it, yeah, it can get a little overwhelming. So if you're going to go to those places, check them out ahead of time. And you're going to start to see that you're going to have to get there a little bit early. The main dining room, not so much, not so bad. Specialty dining, not so bad. But the big popular places, the Mongolian Walk guys, yeah, they're going to be crowded. And lastly, of course, if you have kids, I want to say for sure that Carnival does have really good kids clubs. With uh, Dr. Seuss, the green eggs and ham breakfast really good entertainment on board so if you're a family with young kids carnival can be a great cruise line to go for and the magic is no exception they have some of the better kids clubs on their ship as it's a fair size ship and it's well staffed and speaking of staff carnival cruise line staff is really good especially i found on the magic and the dream where lines can get big or people can get be getting frustrated they kind of are always in a good mood and always happy and that kind of transfers to you and it's hard to be in a bad mood when the person serving you looks like they're in a good mood so it really does help to keep the crews lighthearted, and they do a really good job with that so i hope you like this little video it's just my thoughts on the carnival magic this year it's a good ship it has its flaws it has its great things so it's up to you to decide whether you want to take a chance on sailing her or not there's nothing overly wrong with the ship and there's nothing brand new and fantastic about it it's a good cruise ship with a good crew if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more tip videos more cruise vlogs all kinds of things on travel hit that subscribe button until next time please have yourself a safe and a great vacation.